get started. Um, welcome, everybody. Today is Tuesday, September 25th, 2018. Um, I am your myopic host, uh, Jay Singer Dumars, and uh, this is Kubernetes SIG release. Uh, I don't have a good handy short link for the agenda, so you'll have to look at the meeting invite to find a, a URL to that. Uh, but essentially, the, the notes will take will be there, available for your viewing later. So, um, without further ado, I believe the first item on the agenda belongs to Dems, uh, if Dems is around, which I'm looking in the attendee list and not seeing. Um, we'll ping Dems offline and see if he wants to uh, join here in a bit. Um, <clears throat> So let's go ahead and skip forward to uh, uh, 1.13 uh, updates with Aish, and we'll go from there. Hey, all. Um, so 1.12 is almost wrapping up. I'll, um, I'll wait for Tim to give an update later if he wants to. Um, so as of today, 1.13 is um, set to start next Monday, October 1st. Uh, we have a full uh, release team. Thanks to uh, Stephen's efforts and all the first time volunteers and people continuing on. We have like a full release team or fully staffed. So that's exciting. Um, so I have posted a link to the timeline. Um, uh, this is a very crunched uh, release to say the least between the two KubeCons and Thanksgiving holidays in the last two weeks of December. We only have about 10 weeks of um, release time. So the PR there, um, goes through the schedule. Uh, we have some LDTMs and consensus there. Um, so I'm going to hold till end of day tomorrow, waiting for some final feedback before I get the first draft uh, schedule in. Um, and we'll have to, after that, play by the year, depending on how the release goes, um, if we need to extend the dates or pull some dates ahead. Um, so I, yeah, your feedback is more than welcome there. Um, and the last piece of information, um, yeah, looking at, if, if you look at the timeline, you'll see that um, the most critical, at least the top most critical thing that's going to determine the health of the release is the enhancement load, the feature load coming in. So Kendrick, uh, who is the feature lead, and I, we plan to sync up with the six next two weeks, uh, specifically to get an assessment of what they're planning for 113 and how much of the follow, fallouts from 112 are still on track for 113 so that we can kindly hint to them that not to be too aspirational in terms of features for the release given the timeline itself. Um, so we hope to have like a, like a good list by the end of first two weeks at least and then we plan to follow pretty closely so that the release doesn't derail way too much. Um, and the final piece is, if anybody from the 113 team, if you're on the call, I had sent out um, a set of housekeeping uh, notes uh, that'll help us get started on the release, including um, the calendar invites, uh, what Google groups to join, um, and uh, instructions on getting membership. So if you didn't receive the email and or, or um, need help for sponsorship, anything, please ping me on Slack. As of now, the burn down is set to start next Monday, October 1st, at 11 a.m. PST. That's it from 1.30. Great. Um, are there any questions uh, uh, for Aish on the, this particular race? Or anything anybody wants to know about kicking off a release? OK. Great. Yeah, how, do I, how do I decide between my four volunteers for Shadow? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what I'd say is, uh, you know, we're all a community around these roles. So if you need help, definitely don't be afraid at any point in the release cycle to ask. Um, and uh, in this meeting, generally speaking, is a great place to do that if you're curious about anything as bug triage or whatever you're doing in this release uh, and you just don't, you know, feel like you're you're doing the right things or you don't know what you're doing or any of that stuff. I, anybody who's hold the release role has, has stared at the mirror at least once and said, what am I doing? I have no idea. So uh, don't ever feel feel bad about that. It's, uh, we're all making it up as we go. <laughs> so uh, to, to that point, a little note. Um, I, I want to encourage everyone to like really challenge the documentation, challenge like everything that exists, because I think some of the 
the the best lens to view the release team in is someone who hasn't done it before. Um, so, you know, over the last two release cycles, we've had a lot of good documentation come into SIG release uh, as a repo, but we can always do better. So please challenge all of the assumptions that are there already and feel free to contribute. Use that as, as means to get your Kubernetes membership by writing documentation for us. Yeah, for real. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting too, because every release, uh, the, the process evolves in some way. So because we do retrospectives and hopefully learn and and grow so it's it's always a changing thing so there's no way unless we're doing it completely wrong that the that any of the documentation is correct after a release it should all get refreshed um, with what we learned so um, thank you Stephen that's a super super uh, salient point um, okay so moving along uh, are we still dimsless dims free oh okay let me begin okay uh, thank you for doing that. Okay, uh, let's talk SIG sessions for Seattle, uh, SIGless in Seattle, and Shanghai as well. Uh, I didn't put that uh, agenda item in there, so whoever put that in. Yeah, I put it in. Okay. So um, I wanted to actually coordinate because I know that we have a few of the scheduled now that we've gotten the information back from um, the conference organizers. Um, the deep dive that um, Chuck and Doug proposed for Seattle got accepted. Um, and so that will be um, a sort of deep dive on build tools um, for, um, for Seattle. Um, I believe there was an intro session for Shanghai. I didn't propose it. I proposed, in int yeah, I proposed intro and deep dive and they were both accepted for Shanghai. Okay. Well, so, Tim, question on that: Are we still, or was there a plan to do a release team panel? Let me double check what I had proposed. <laughs> yeah, this I was, think your how many months ago was this? Yeah, I think your deep dive session was supposed to be a release team panel. I I don't know what which ones it ended up being done. Deep dive, I was hoping to, so it's what's proposed is have a sort of a back and forth conversation with Chinese ecosystem vendors to, to see how we're doing relative to their needs. And then the Shanghai intro, that one doesn't say panel. Did we propose the panel for Seattle? Oh, sorry, I think the panel was for Seattle, yeah. And was the panel during deep dive or? Yeah, I'm just looking at what what the text of the proposal is. The intro is really just a high level intro, but we could for it as proposed for Seattle. But um, I would like to do a panel honestly to get a little more discussion. So and, and really, I submitted the the ones for Shanghai, sort of speculatively open ended. So. At this point, if anybody is going to be there and wants to do a panel, let's coordinate it. Are yeah. you going? Or? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. For, for Seattle. I'm oh, not Seattle. going to the okay. Shanghai one. Yeah, I'm not going to Shanghai either. So, but Considering Shanghai and Seattle are really close together, if we do an intro in Shanghai, I think a panel in Seattle. Um, I doubt there will be much crossover, though, honestly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking there won't be much crossover. So. That's kind of why I was thinking for Shanghai, back when I'd proposed things, intro just high level overview, and then for the deep dive to really try to make some connections in the ecosystem there, if folks show up to see how we're doing by their needs and maybe drive some connections there. Yeah. Seeing as that we're speculating they wouldn't be in Seattle or, or others. Yeah, and if you wind up having a lot of crossover in the audience, then we can adjust accordingly. Yeah, for sure. The live event is sort of like master, just merge right to it, you know, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Do a live. Um, okay, cool. Um, so does anybody need any help uh, organizing that stuff or are we, are we in a good position? Or? I would like to get folks involvement, but it's been sort of the secondary thing on my to-do list until the end of this week, probably. So I'll, I'll be reaching out and pinging more after this week. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I'd say just don't don't hesitate to to reach out. Definitely will not. Okay. Um, are we still? Dims is in Seattle. Uh, Dims is in, he's stuck in traffic, so oh. we might have to move his okay. topic and explain. Okay, let me move that. Um, um, okay, then moving along, uh, I put a thing in here for SIG leadership. Um, uh, partly because uh, there is a pretty good chance that I'm going to step down as lead um, and give an opportunity for someone else to, to step into the role and, and have all the fun of, of running these meetings and all that good stuff. So uh, I just like to put it out there that if anybody has a, a deep interest in being a chair, probably when we redo the charter, it would make a good time to, to make that transition. Um, I'm a volunteering as tribute. Uh, Why am I not surprised, even? <laughs> uh, so, so part of the so I, I have not had a chance to do the charter, but I signed up for this a, a, a while ago. Yeah. And once this release closes, uh, that'll be my first item. Okay, that's great. Um, and probably I'd be interested in helping out too, if necessary or desired. I um obviously focused up until this week on the release, but getting into the, the nitty gritty of the release process by, by being lead on the 112 cycle, I definitely see a lot of things that I'd like to continue on driving improvements. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no limit on the number of chairs. And, and frankly, as I've seen running uh, various SIGs over the last few years, uh, having more people to makes it better uh, because it's, you know, somebody's in a conference or, you know, it just makes it way easier. And because the chair is not a, a role with power, it's really about organizing and, and making sure that people are rallied around the right problems. Uh, the more lenses we have on that, the better. I mean, I think everybody, Stephen would make a great chair. I think Timmy would make a great chair. I should make a great chair. There's the, we're just flush with people who are, who are just imminently qualified to do it. So what I just say is, you know, um, if we can define the role however we want, we could have seven chairs for all I care. and uh, we split it up, but I just want to make sure it represents a good cross section of the of the community and cross section of of, uh, of the, what we're trying to accomplish and ideas and all that stuff and, and good company diversity and all that. Um, so, Stephen, thank you so much for for jumping onto the the charter uh, work because that is with the new charter uh, format, it shouldn't be too bad, but you know, it's just more more uh, work that needs to be done. So thank yeah, you. I, I have an old branch for it and I'm now realizing that the charter format has shifted again. So I'll have to rework it. Yeah, uh, it's super frustrating. And I'm, I'm sorry that there's so much rework there. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, let's, uh, so we also need to define sub projects for us. Obviously the release team is probably gonna be a sub project. Um, we probably are gonna have a sub project around uh, artifacts because I think we, we're probably on deck to figure out what we actually consider official release artifacts and what those are used for, right? Um, there's sort of the, the debate over, is it, is it a reference? Is it a reference artifact or is it something that we support and recommend people install on their production clusters or all that good stuff? Um, then there's provenance associated with those so that we can do some sort of signing or you know, something that's, that's still outstanding whole bunch of stuff there that we need to, to define moving forward. And frankly, uh, I think it's time for, for new ideas and, and new, new thoughts on that. Um, you're muted, Josh, if you're trying to talk. Um, still muted, Josh. Sorry, I was saying something to somebody in the office. Oh, oh, oh okay, no, no worries. I just want to make sure you were heard if you needed. Um, and I know you get excited about uh, art, uh, provenance and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> um, okay. Is there anything else that anybody else wants to, to touch base on in terms of governance or the, the SIG leadership or any of that? So does the, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, does, sure. does this whole um, charter rotation or not charter rotation, redefining the charter and team or leadership rotation, it happens is there a set cadence in which this happens or is it just on, is it like a 
an annual thing or how does it happen? Um, we'll define what the, the charter life cycle is. Um, when I did the, the Sacred Architecture one, I put in a six month explicit refresh just okay. to validate that the, the things that we're deciding make sense um, since it's the first one. And one of, the, one of the things I feel strongly about is that um, these should be very dynamic living documents because we're not, we're not setting law in stone. So if we find that, for example, a subproject doesn't work right and we need to refigure it or whatever, that shouldn't be a big deal. We should just make sure that there's enough decision making um, things in the charter that we can refresh when it makes sense. And so does that answer your question? Yep. And the leads is, it's again, like whenever there's someone is overloaded or when someone wants to step in. Yeah. And that's why I like having the idea of a lot of leads. I would love, you know, this thing, um, SIG, SIG release has traditionally been one of the most cutting edge uh, uh, SIGs in terms of defining roles and our processes being really well defined and accountabilities and all that stuff. I would love for us to be the model of what a good charter system looks like and good leadership um, and some projects. Because I feel like right now, uh, it's sort of missing. Like the, there are people doing it, but I think we could really embody, I think, the best qualities of that uh, intent. So. Um, and also, too, just to, in case, I mean, probably nobody's worried about this, but I'm not going to disappear from the project or anything. It's just, uh, I just want to make sure that we're making room for the next uh, generation of leaders, which is not me. <laughs> I've been on this thing for three years, pretty much every day of my life for the last three years. So, um, all right, any other things? Okay, uh, looks like there's a question in the chat from Tunde. Seems to be a lot of emphasis on docs and part of bug triage for 113. Is this something I can help with if available? Yes. Please. Sure. Um, so that, are you talking about uh, the docs role in general Tunde or um, are revamping the docs for bug triage? Either way, we could, um, if you're part of Bug Triage, yeah, you could definitely take a look at the docs and see what's missing or what you want to make better. Um, that we could definitely do in 113. And also, there's the whole docs team that does the whole docs uh, portion of it. Um, yeah, we can, we can definitely chat offline. Uh, we can use your help. Yeah. For the, the sort of parallel question about how does the release process work? This isn't super well documented. So especially for folks on the release team, if you start with the role handbooks you have and read what we have documented so far, and then are paying attention during the cycle and sort of questioning actively like, hey, this doesn't quite match with what was in the document or, or even, even better maybe like, why are we doing it this way? <laughs> sure, it's what's documented, but could we do better? And, and here's why, like any suggestions like that would be extremely welcome. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's uh, as Stephen said. Question: I'll question everything you read. Question the assumptions. Question um, the rationale. And these are all. These should all be living documents for sure. All right. Um, any last minute things before we adjourn for this meeting? So I've got a question kind of in that similar vein. As we were discussing some of the, the release artifacts and build process stuff last week, Caleb suggested that maybe it's time to start formulating a cap around that, what we think the release en engineering process should be, and get more folks talking about it and, and follow the cap process for it. I'm curious what folks think. So there was, um, I, I forgot exactly where it was, but someone said there Someone said someone was working on a cap for something release engineering related. I don't know where it lives. It's probably hidden in the SIG release chat somewhere. Um, I can try to dig it up. But yes, we should absolutely formal, formalize uh, one in, in, in name on the charter and, and two in, uh, in cap. Yeah, um, I think it, just to even to have a cohesive place where we document the evolution of it would be good. Um, I do want to think really hard, though, about what a cap is is designed to document and how the release process 
deviates from that and how uh, we can inform the CAP process itself with what we, what we decide and learn. Because um, the CAP process is really not geared toward process as much as it is implementation of, of code. Um, and a lot of the release process is not necessarily code, it's docs. And I wonder if for that reason, maybe the CAP that was referred to, and, and I don't remember actually clicking or seeing a specific link, but maybe it's something coming out of SIG testing partially, specifically around code enhancements and, and rolling things over to CNCF. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Okay, just a guess. Yeah, if anybody if anybody runs across that mysterious cap, I'd love to I'd love to see it. So put a put a link in the release channel. Um, Arno has posted something here. Let me see what that is. Uh, image promoter process copy container. Yeah, that's something else. Um, I don't Arno. I don't think that's the I don't think that's the one. Is it? Steve, can you just paste? Oh. Yeah, so that's one of the ones I had in mind too. Um, that was scrolling around in the channel. Um, so that's not that's not top level process, but one of the pieces of the, the vast yeah. puzzle that is released. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so we should probably just look and see what what caps should be sponsored by SIG release. Um, you know, we can't get this charter in fast enough and get the the SIG leadership in place because I feel like I'm dragging some of these these uh, initiatives behind, um, and I don't want to be doing that. I because there's a lot of work here, and I I do not have the bandwidth to do it. Um, so, yeah. We definitely need to assemble all these caps and, and probably come up with a meta cap around the release process itself. Don't you dare volunteer, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh man. I, I'm not writing another, another meta cap for a while. <laughs> Aaron's not here. I, I bet it was Aaron who was doing it. That could be, yeah. Aaron, That's how volunteering works, right? Whoever's not here. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, no, I, yeah, let's uh, let's just do that asynchronously then in the in the SIG release channel, and we can figure it out there, and maybe organize a work. I would love to see this work get spread out a little bit more, and also not have to have the people who are tasked with the release process having to do all this stuff at the same time because that's a lot. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I feel like we're understaffed. From my perspective, I feel like, I guess kind of like echoing what I said earlier, being the release lead for this last cycle, I feel like it informed me quite a bit. And I, I'm excited to, to not have to deal with the release now and be able to get down to some of that, that work. So uh, yeah. there's at least my pair of hands coming available okay. for the next while. Yeah, that's good. And it's good to, from experience, capture that stuff while it's right in front of mind because uh, it's super important to capture that. Um, that experience. As a segue, do we have like a retrospect? Um, do we know when we're having the 112 retrospect? Yeah, it'll be Thursday of next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be facilitating. Is it is it during the community meeting or? Yep, okay. we typically yep. try to do that. And then if there are things that roll out of it, then we do it at the next SIG release meeting. Okay, sounds good. <clears throat> Um, okay, cool. Any other, uh, any other things before we roll out? All right, everybody, thank you so much for your engaged participation, as always, and uh, I'll have this recording up soon, and have a great rest of your day and week. Thanks, y'all. Take it easy. Bye. Uh,